In 1952, just before the emergence of rock and roll and the hydrogen bomb testing a year later, occurred the discovery and opening of the tomb of Pacalbotán in Chiapas, Mexico. The opening of this tomb was the most important archaeological event in the last half of the 20th century. This mysterious tomb was a time capsule that released many thought forms, including those of other worlds. These thought forms seeded the collective minefield creating receptivity for the new art form that would have the power to activate and trigger memories of the lost planets, i.e. rock and roll. The whole being of the masses would be absorbed in this new art form with a two-fold function. One, to remind of the interval of the lost time in eternity, so that intelligent members of the species might overcome the psychic contradiction that keeps them in shackles. And two, through music as an artistic medium, to help people resolve and transform their psychic contradiction into a higher frequency. In this way, the whole of rock and roll as a collective tapestry, spanning some 50 years in duration, was a mighty collective effort to recall the last chord. In 1956 came the birth of rock and roll. When people first heard Elvis Presley, they might not have been consciously aware of his cosmic function, but they were aware that he was communicating something new and exciting. Elvis's form of expression transcended all styles, though it also contained familiar folk idioms, namely rhythm and blues and country and western. But the point is that he was communicating subliminal memories that had everything to do with the arousal and excitement of the lost planet Anals. When Elvis entered the mass consciousness, he was thought to have a dangerous quality in his performance and music. It pushed the edges of the known. That is why parents were afraid of it, and the youth loved it. The music transported them to an exciting new land, where they received subliminal messages of freedom and liberation. Though Elvis ignited the flame in the United States, as an electronic art form, rock and roll really began in England where the Industrial Revolution was seeded. In 1958, with the influence of Elvis, the first rock and roll group formed in the UK, Cliff Richards and the Shadows. This band set a standard and paved the way for groups like Rolling Stones and the Beatles. The Beatles catalyzed rock and roll into a definitive art form in 1962 with the release of their first single, Love Me Do. As a quartet, they were perfectly synchronized, and together their individual personas became instantly mythic, triggering innumerable Lost Planet Analves of the harmonic perfection of the Lost Chord. Once they had catalyzed the collective unconscious, the Beatles received the projection of their own feedback and swiftly entered into a transformation, creatively unequaled in the modern art scene. With the Beatles, the mind of the whole world changed. Rock and roll had come of age. As became evident over time, John Lennon was the most singular of the Beatles and perhaps of all rock performers. He was visionary and outspoken to the highest degree. John Lennon says, My role in society or any artist or poet's role is to try and express what we all feel. Not to tell people how to feel, not as a preacher, not as a leader, but as a reflection of us all. Considering the breadth of Lenin's work, the subliminal subjectivity of his perceptions and his unrestrained messages of truth, one can only conclude that he was a prophet of the modern soul. The number of notable English rock and roll bands is disproportionate to the number of American bands, considering their populations. The English were the real innovators of rock, producing bands such as Beatles, The Kings, The Who, The Rolling Stones, Cream, T-Rex, Led Zeppelin, and Pink Floyd, etc. The exceptions from the United States were bands such as The Doors, The Grateful Dead, and The Beach Boys, as well individual artists such as Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Aretha Franklin, and Bob Dylan. Another factor contributing to the rise of rock and roll as a definitive art form in England was the British tradition or legacy of poets and bards, from the ancient Gaelic times to the Romantic era. In the post-atomic industrial landscape, artists born of this tradition picked up an electric guitar instead. <laughs> 